Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about Ron Barron. Ron Barron is the legendary investor in Tesla. I think he's been in the stock since like 2013, 2014, uh, or maybe even 2015, 2016. But before it had its massive run up, he was always a believer in Elon Musk, always uh, a believer in the trillion dollar opportunity. He thought Tesla would hit a market cap of 2030 by or hit a market cap of 1 trillion by 2030 and they ended up doing that about nine years earlier so obviously he's made about four or five six billion dollars on tesla for his investors a legendary investor in general outside of his tesla pick today he came out with a take that says this is a generational buying opportunity and that equity prices are looking incredibly attractive and we are going to react to why he said so let's get into it well uh the market was going down uh significantly for eight or nine months when we spoke uh, on June 17th. And at that time, virtually everyone you had on was saying negative things. And the concern was uh, universal about inflation and higher interest rates and oil prices. And I want to point out that every time everyone tries to predict macro, uh, they're almost always wrong. And from going back to Greenspan in 1996, when it was, uh, uh, you know, uh, when, when he said it was irrational exuberance and then the stock market doubled the next four or five years, uh, or the uh, executive you had on predicting oil prices, uh, when oil prices, uh, this summer he said oil prices, and he should know, he's the head of an investment bank about oil, and uh, oil prices were 120, he said they'd be 150 uh, by summer, and now they're 90. Uh, and uh, oh, commodity prices overall, everyone was worried about them. Uh, everything across the board is down 30 or 40 percent. Uh, uh, the economy is slower, uh, inventories are being destocked. Uh, so the uh, economy is definitely slow. Hi hiring freezes are taking place, so the economy is definitely slower. So it's easy to get out of inflation. It's impossible to get out of deflation. So we never predict anything about the economy or about the stock market. Uh, just when you look at the prices of companies that were selling in June and that are selling still now, so this is one of the things that Ron Barron has been uh, very consistent about as an investor. It's like, we're not trying to make macroeconomic predictions because most people that do that end up getting it wrong. You've seen someone like Michael Burry, who's been saying <clears throat> that the economy is going to crash for like the past 14 years, and then it finally crashed. Uh, and it hasn't even gone that bad, given the S&P is getting back to kind of normal level. So it's like, when you try to predict this stuff, usually you end up being wrong. Rather, do you look at you look at the prices, whether it's a bear market or bull market, and you say, is this a good price to buy the company based upon all the fundamentals and based upon where the world is going? And that's how he kind of makes his decisions um, versus just predicting the macro. Uh, there are prices that are uh, unusually attractive relative to the company's opportunities long term. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I can't tell you this was the bottom. Uh, who knows? Uh, but the bottom line is that these are all really attractive prices, really attractive times. And we've been buying then, been buying since, and buying uh, you know, uh, you know, continuously. Uh, so I, I was going to get to a few companies, uh, Tesla, oh, SpaceX, Ron, uh, Ron, the Lululemon Ron, of healthcare. Ron, can I just, uh, just, just, just you know, continuing that for, for just for one second, can I, I ask Becky if I could just, just add to that? Because we do talk. Bro, the amount. <laughs> That's, was that just, did anyone else find that funny or that was just be like bah, bah, dah, bah, dah, dah, bah. okay all right whatever talk about it a lot and there's been i don't know if you saw how many people were calling for new lows uh all along from june 16th all the way up everybody we have on says we're going below 3600 on the sp and i know you're not a short-term guy and that's not what i'm looking for here but what do you think of the notion that we had a really good bounce, but much more than most people thought, back to, to 4,200 or whatever you, you would say. Now it's being questioned again, and it almost makes me think, instead of that being a, a bull, a, a fake rally, a bull in, a, in an overall bear, I think now this might be a quick bear fake out to, 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 question, to have people questioning wh whether they should be bullish. So the argument here that he's making is that, look, when we got to 3,600 on the S&P, the entire world, including JP Morgan, that by the way, just said we're going to go to 4,800 on the S&P. They said we're going to go to 3,200 on the S&P. So they were like, it's it's bad. Like the sky is falling down. Uh, and then we've had a sharp bounce back to 4,300, 40, 42, uh, 428. So it's like, it's been a decent bounce, but now it's back down, down to the 412, 415 level. And it's like, is was that a fake bear market rally? Remember in 2008, we had a 20% upcline, but then we had the actual bottom. So that was like a real bear market rally. And what Joe is trying to ask Ron is like, do you think that's the case here? So yesterday we had a guy say, I've gone from selling strength back to buying dips. And I wonder if, I mean, that made sense to me. I don't think we see 3,600 again. Um, well, you know, uh, I've started 
in business in 1970. And then 1982 uh, began Barron Capital. Uh, and at the time, we had a small number of assets under management that the Dow Jones was 800. And people were really upset about the market being, uh, you know, uh, inflation, interest rates. That was when I started Barron Capital, 1982. 800 on the Dow Jones, now 32,000. Uh, but if you go back to uh, World War I, uh, in 1918, uh, we had the Spanish flu. We like to call things Spanish flu, Chinese flu. We never can you know, blame someone else all the time. But uh, there was inflation, uh, and we ended a war. Uh, and then the stock market, then you had the Roaring Twenties. And in 1945, you ended World War II. Uh, and uh, the next three years, you had inflation, higher interest rates. Uh, debt was higher than the uh, size of the economy. And the stock market, and then we started the Marshall Plan, 1949 to 1955, uh, the stock market tripled. Uh, then you had uh, uh, 1982. Uh, of course, uh, that was following the Vietnam War. You had a lot of inflation, high interest rates. And what happened? The Dow Jones went from 800 to 32,000. So do I tell you that the market is going to, you know, so everyone is so short term. Everything is so short term. So Elon right. Musk says that uh, the people who are most likely to be successful are the people who have long-termism, who think about things long-term, not, not now, and are optimistic. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, then, and he says, and what you need, really need is people who have infinite time horizons, not tomorrow, not next quarter, infinite time horizons. So you know, he may not get to Mars, uh, but he's certainly uh, investing so he can, or people are planting trees, right. not necessarily because they're going to sit under them, but because other people will enjoy them. Infinite time horizons is incredibly interesting. So first of all, he's doing a historical analysis of when we've had periods of inflation and then, uh, you know, historical events uh, like World War One. We've had stock market rallies after that and or the Spanish flu. So like the, the, the reason for this is because if you take a long term trajectory on the stock market, things tend to get better if you are optimistic and if you are looking for companies that are actually doing things that will be relevant in the future. With the Elon Musk infinite time horizon thing, this is also an interesting thing because this is something that Jeff Bezos believes in as well, which is the concept of, okay, we're not going to get to space. Our generation is probably not going to get there. Elon says we can get to Mars. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. But building the infrastructure, the highways to get there is what matters, right? So like with, 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 with Amazon, the only reason Amazon was able to be successful is because the credit card infrastructure and the internet was built. It was like the highways for them to be able to build a company on top of that stuff. You needed online payments um, and you needed uh, the internet, right? You needed something to connect the entire world together. And so Amazon was built and then a lot of other internet companies were built. For the next generation of space companies that probably aren't even gonna happen in my lifetime, your lifetime, maybe we're talking about maybe even hundreds of years from now, uh, we are going to need the infrastructure created by people like Elon Musk to have the ability for people to even build a space company on top of something, which means there needs to be some type of new, for example, internet that exists to be able to get us to space. And that requires an infinite time horizon A, which means you're investing as if this is going to happen in, in the future, which means you're going to make a lot of progress along the way to get there. And then B, you need to have optimism. If you have those two things and you're actually pursuing a goal that's that's worthy enough, there may be a world in which, you know, SpaceX does really well in the public stock market because people fall in love with that mission and because they're actually making progress to get there. So, so I think that the idea here is that every time, every single time there's been a financial panic, there's been a war, there's been a COVID, uh, 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 you know, uh, an economic, uh, you know, uncertainty, and chaos. Whenever these sort of things happen, uh, the government steps in in every democracy that's ever existed and devalues our currency. And the way they do that, the reason they do it is because they want to take care of their citizens. They want to get reelected, of course, and then they want to protect them and, and they want to make the economy grow faster. And then to get out of the debt, this is not unplanned where we have this inflation now. This is planned. It's planned to make the debt worth less relative to the size of the economy and the economy to grow faster. It's a plan, and it always has been. And so what happens is we're investing in growth companies, so the growth companies are our hedge against inflation. No, we're not investing in commodities or Bitcoin or gold. Or, mm. We're not doing any of that. We're just investing in companies growing more than the economy. Economy grows 6 or 7% a year, 2 or 3% real, 4 or 5% inflation. Now, that last part that he talked about was actually a all, really interesting thing. He says that we are investing in growth companies that are going to be able to grow faster than the economy in the future. Now, growth companies, because of high inflation, means higher interest rates. Interest rates are bad for tech valuations, uh, especially rising interest rates and inflation in general is bad for that. So like those tech companies in the short term get butchered. 
But in the long term, if you're betting on those companies to be able to grow faster than the economy, those are going to be the ones that appreciate the most in value and get the premiums on their valuations because they actually have the ability to grow and offer a massive value to society. And the reason they're growing so fast is because they're offering that massive value to society. So it's almost like that's Ron Barron's hedge against inflation that is devaluing currency because eventually when inflation goes down, you need companies that are growing faster than what the economy is going for relative to its debt. And that would be the highest growing tech companies in the world, which that thesis led him to eventually invest in Tesla all those years ago. So interesting take by Ron Barron. Let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with him? Do you not agree with him? How do you see investing in growth companies right now, given the cycle of inflation that we had? Uh, would love to know your comments. Thanks so much for listening and watching. I will see you in the next one.